What if we let creativity drive change? Creativity for impact, for people, for tomorrow. Creative Denmark. Creative Insights, Partnerships for Impact. We are so happy to be a part of South by Southwest, representing Denmark at the Danish Pavilion with today's, uh, today's event. We're also live streaming to our followers, uh, followers on LinkedIn, so welcome to you as well. Uh, today we have focus on how creative partnerships can contribute to new and more creative innovative solutions with impact. Being a very small country, Denmark has always been used to working in collaborative ways across disciplines and across industries, but also across borders. Uh, this has been a need for us to do that uh, and to work in this way to be able to incorporate uh, all the different sectors that we represent but also to get the impact that we want to. Um, this method, working across borders but also working across hierarchy, working across sectors, public-private sectors, working across industries, has proven to be very, very successful and impactful. Uh, this co-creating process makes sense for us. Um, this has created, created creative solutions, valuable from a human perspective. So with this in mind, I want to uh, welcome you all to talk about this today and also to represent uh, three different very exciting companies I have with me. Uh, that being Antco, Takt and Contrapunkt. I will get back to them. Um, they're all working very innovatively and very strong uh, in collaborative partnerships in, uh, to be able to create top quality products and solutions. We also have an expert with us in international collaboration, Pamela Tilla from the uh, Trade Council in, in North America who will share some insights on uh, the strength of working uh, uh, across borders. We will finish up with a panel debate where I have prepared some questions for our companies where we'll, we, will, we will share experiences on how this collaborative method uh, have contributed to very, very strong solutions. So thank you again for joining us today. I now have the pleasure of presenting our first company Jan, uh, Jan Ulf, sorry, Johnson, CEO at Antco. Antco is an international acclaimed creative communication agency based out of Copenhagen. The floor is yours. Thank you. Yes, uh, I will give you now a short introduction to, to our company and uh, the way we view collaboration. I think I should press the button to get the first slide. I, I can just start out by saying that, uh, if you go one back, um, this, the company Anco was founded 21 years ago on the premise that collaboration is the most powerful force in order to create fantastic uh, creative solutions that make a difference. So uh, the founders uh, felt that the best way to do that was to, to call the company and co. And every time we work with a, a new client, and Jens has promised that uh, Takt might become a client at some stage, then it would be Takt and co. So we always work together with our clients uh, in collaboration and use that as a force for, for creating better creative solutions. Um, we believe that has only become a better idea uh, the last 21 years because uh, we can solve uh, more complicated challenges, different challenges using creativity. Um, so f six, seven years ago, uh, we joined forces with uh, digital companies and design companies in a new setup called the North Alliance, NOAA, so we could solve more complicated challenges. Uh, we have discovered that uh, collaboration is hard work it's going to take some investment in order to, to generate the, the trust and, and psychological safety you need to collaborate. But when you have reached the point where you actually can trust each other to use each other's different competences in, in collaboration in order to solve challenges, then magic happens. Uh, we normally say that at our company we have three 
mutually important competences, which are strategy, creativity and collaboration. So we try not to treat collaboration only as a thing that happens as you do your work, but as a competence in its own right. Um, what we do uh, at ANCO primarily is to bring human understanding in terms of emotions, what drives our decision making into practice, to use this emotional context and human insights in order to drive our clients' businesses. So that's our uh, premise, that's the, the, the competence and the perspective we bring into the collaborations. Uh, and we see that when, when we work in our uh, core field of, of uh, communication advertising, we've seen that uh, we've gone from making TVCs 21 years ago to making more integrated solutions uh, in terms of digital channels, social channels, uh, in terms of uh, connecting the funnel from the brand building to the, to the executional work uh, through with, uh, with the data and tech stacks. So having collaboration as a core competence in order to, for creativity to be, be a growth driver is, is extremely important. Um, on top of that, we see that, uh, that when you try to create change on an enterprise level, organizational level, societal level, uh, it is not enough only to explain what it is you're trying to do and your strategy for achieving that. You need to bring the emotional human perspective into that, to mobilize people. And that's where our specialist competences of storytelling comes into play. So I'll show you a couple of examples on that. It's going to take about a minute. Um, and then we'll leave it to Jens. Oh. This is a story about us, the indoor generation. So you wanted to find out your results? Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Arnold, for a very good presentation. Next up, we have Jens Jamin, who is co-founder at Takt. Takt is a Danish uh, furniture company working to rethink the way we design, build, and sell furniture. Jens. Thank you. I've chosen to open with a quote from the man, the myth, the icon, David Bowie. It says, why bother choosing a certain chair? because that chair says something about you. At TAC, we also believe that this quote is correct. So here's a chair. It's called Sling Lounge Chair. It's a chair we launched uh, this week. It's super fresh. Uh, it's new design. It's a chair that demands attention. It's a chair that doesn't go unnoticed. This chair has a story, and if you buy it, the story will tell something about you. It is designed and produced in collaboration with uh, this designer couple in the UK, uh, Kim Carlin and uh, Sam Hecht, based out of London. They work with, uh, they have a company called Industrial Facility. The chair is produced by Chakt, uh, a young Danish uh, furniture design company uh, with a clear mission. Um, the one word proposition is called rethinking. Uh, we want to rethink the way we produce, the way we design, and the way, the way we distribute uh, furniture for the mutual benefit of people and the planet. TACT is founded on three key trends, three key meter observations. The first one is that Danish design is increasingly popular globally. Uh, the second one is direct-to-consumer is retail trend number one. And the third one is sustainability is simply a global challenge we need to embrace. So TACT is 
Danish design with global outlook, a digitally native direct-to-consumer brand, and a truly sustainable design brand. Danish design eventually was meant for uh, the people, that people had uh, the opportunity to, to buy great design. The problem is Danish design has now become uh, super expensive. It is, has become for the few. We want to produce stellar design and sell it at very fair prices in the marketplace to a lot of people. We call it we call it dem democratic, de democratic design for sustainable living. When it comes to su sustainability, there's too much hot air in, 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 in the market. People have no clue in terms of what brand they should turn to, as everybody is communicating sustainability and is, it's often seen as greenwashing. We're different. We strongly uh, recommend our consumers and consumers in general to look for uh, external validated certifications. And of course, we are completely transparent about that in our communication. Look for the EU EcoFlower, look for B Corp certification, and look for FSC when it comes to material use. Uh, uh, TACT carries all of those three certifications. So let's go back to and close the loop to Mr. Bowie's quote. Why bother choosing a certain chair? Because that chair says something about you. Sling Lounge Chair says, you're buying products, a product that meets the highest standard of transparency, responsibility, sustainability, and craftsmanship. You're part of a global movement of people using business as a force for good. And you are part of the change that we seek in the world. We can truly call that partnerships for impact. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jens, and beautiful. Congratulations on Sling. Um, I, and I absolutely loved democratic design for sustainable living. I think it's a fantastic theme. So thank, thank you. you. Uh, next up, we have Philip uh, Linnemann, who is the Executive Creative Director at Contrapunt. Contrapunt is an international brand experience agency working from offices in both Copenhagen and Tokyo, Japan. Welcome, Philip. Thank you, Michael, and uh, hello to you all. Uh, my name is Philip, and um, uh, I work at Contrapunt. And at Contrapunt, we really believe that design has the power to excite people and, ex and, and inspire change, to get people around a common purpose and work towards uh, big goals and create impact. So when we think about uh, impact and when we think about partnerships, what we can mostly do as an agency is to create impact through our clients. So our relationship to our clients is our, are our partnerships. And whether that being uh, public institutions like the Danish Ministry or its scale-ups like Pecan or big blue chip organizations like Ørsted, they all have tremendous opportunity to create this impact. And today I'd just like to share one key attribute that we believe at Contrapunt is really key to, to create strong partnerships. And, um, and that one thing is trust. And if you break tr trust down and you really start thinking about what it is, um, when you use trust in business language, you typically people tend to focus on the top line. They tend to think about reliability and credibility as the most professional things that you can use in order to create trust. But where it gets really interesting in our view is looking at the bottom line, looking at your level of self-interest. And working with your level of self-interest is actually really hard because as human beings, we are hardwired to think about ourselves first. We are hardwired to think about our own way of, of survival. And so to really flip that around is really a tough challenge, but to think in empowerment is really what we believe is the ultimate way of creating trust. And that muscle is what we try and exercise every day at ContraPoint. And I'd just like to give you three very short, because we only have four minutes, examples of how that can play out in our everyday. So when we think about empowering our employees, we really believe that 
giving talent uh, an opportunity to grow and support them in, in their responsibilities, like that they can tr create tremendous results. Uh, as an example, we sent two of our very young designers to Japan last year um, with the support and responsibility to uh, work with our clients in Japan. And only within a year, they were able to lead projects for uh, clients like Mitsubishi Motors and Shiseido. And today, they have in no time become absolute superstars. So it just says something about what empowerment can do and trust can do uh, when working with your employees. Secondly, uh, when we think about that in terms of our clients, when we work with these big transformation projects from Dong being Ørsted, uh, the most essential part of of uh, building trust and enabling our clients to, to go through transformations like that is empowerment. Uh, and um, to give an example, with when we started working with Ørsted three years ago uh, and we met the former CEO, Henrik Paulsen, the first time, he had a very bold ambition of going totally green. Um, but doing big transformations require a lot of uh, change and a lot of uncertainty. And so working with trust and building uh, a one team uh, feeling uh, was what ultimately enabled us to empower Ørsted to become the most uh, sustainable company in the world. And then the last thing is when we work with these clients, they often have various other agencies that we also uh, need to work with. You can easily regard them your competitors because you're competing against some of the same assignments, but thinking in how can we empower uh, those uh, partners in the best way possible ultimately creates better results for our clients and ultimately creates better business for ourselves. So the one thing I just wanted uh, to say here is when thinking about partnerships, think about empowerment because empowerment is the single most important ingredient in creating trust and trust is ultimately what's needed to create successful partnerships. Thank you. Thank you so much, Philip, for your insights today. And I uh, absolutely agree that excitement <coughs> and trust is essential when working in, in, uh, in partnerships. So thank you so much. Next up, we have Pamela Tilla, who is senior uh, sector expert from the Danish Trade Council in North America. And t uh, Pamela Tilla is with us today to share some insights on working in creative partnerships across borders. Welcome, Pamela. Thank you, Mike. And you guys want to give me a thumbs up just to make sure you can hear me? We can hear you. Thank you. Okay, super. So uh, good morning and thank you. Uh, good afternoon to everyone joining us on this side of the Atlantic. I'm joining you today from, um, from Toronto. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today and to help bridge the gap between the Danish partnerships for impact uh, in the United States. I've had the pleasure of working with Danish firms on their U.S. market entry for the last four years with a specific focus on working with Danish architecture firms, a big export in Denmark's creative sector. In an effort to boil things down to how we can make the most impact, um, both with uh, you and partnerships and also for your business, uh, I want to discuss the following three elements, which I think are critical for any international partner entering the U.S. market. And I have to give credit to Philip because he, uh, where he seemed to be on the same page about some of the trust. First, be strategic about how you enter the U.S. market. Like any business venture, there's a lot of risk with the opportunity. Oh, sorry, excuse me. There's a lot of risk with the opportunity for considerable reward. You should focus on using your business resources carefully because it will be a commitment and it will most likely take some time to get established in the United States. The U.S. is a geographically and culturally diverse place. Think of each state like a different EU market. That's the best way to compare it to something. Determine your unique value proposition and understand your competition. Do the work beforehand and be ready to move quickly and seize those strategic opportunities when they arise. They might not be around for long. The second thing that is, is really critical uh, to build these partnerships for impact is to seek out diverse partnerships. In most cases, you cannot enter the US market completely on your own and you will need to seek out a joint venture partner in some form or another. The United States is an incredibly culturally and racially diverse country. And I challenge you to seek out a partnership which celebrates and shows this diversity. Last fall, the five Nordic trade teams collaborated with the St. Paul Area Chamber of Commerce, the city of St. Paul, and a number of partners in the Twin Cities in Minnesota, which focused on building partnerships with black and minority owned businesses. Danish and other Nordic companies were teamed up with black property developers, 
professional services partners and members of the community. And here they were able to listen, engage and partner with members of a community which had a dramatically different experiences than their own. It was an overwhelmingly positive experience from our Danish and Nordic partners. And I'm happy to say that we have built strong, a strong base with US-based strategic partnerships that are gonna have and continue to have real impact. Finally, uh, the biggest barrier to entry you will find as a Danish company entering the US market is that you will need to build trust and trust takes time. I really like that Philip and the team at ContraPunct acknowledged this in their presentation and also acknowledged some of the time expectations. You know, it takes a full year and that was their experience in Tokyo to sort of get to that level where you're really creating with your partners. Many people in the United States have never heard of Denmark or made an international overseas phone call or understand the degree to which you can operate in English in your daily and business lives. These are things that you need to communicate and, and reassure your partners about. Trust is different in the United States. Denmark, it's a culturally homogenous place. People look, act, and think largely the same way. And this means that when you sit down to do business in Denmark, you get to work right away because trust is automatically assumed with the partners around the table. There's not a lot of small talk. You know, you sit down, you, you, you share ideas right away, and you get to work. In the United States, with people coming from all different backgrounds and experiences, it's going to take time to build this trust. Also, there is an almost absolute trust in government to deliver services in Denmark. And this is a very different in the United States where there are multiple levels of government and different expectations around government service delivery between regions. Be aware of this in your search for impactful partnerships when you're building trust. In summary, your job is to make impact, your job to make impa impactful partnerships, that's a mouthful, impactful partnerships will be to be and communicate your value strategically, to seek out diverse partnerships and to recognize that it will take time to build trust. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pamela, for your insights. Um, Pamela talked a lot about uh, Danish companies going to the US and what obstacles, what uh, things you should be aware of. But, but some of the things that Pamela said was also about trust and trust being a big part of the DNA in Denmark. So if you're going the other way, coming to Denmark to looking for partnerships, you will mostly be able to get to work straight away because that's the way we work in very low hierarchies and very uh, collaborative thinking, co-creative processes. So, um, so I think that uh, uh, the collaboration can go both ways. Uh, so hereby you invite it. Next up, we have the panel debate uh, where I have prepared some questions for our companies uh, represented here today. Um, we only have about 10 minutes left. So I think uh, we will get straight to it. Um, Arnulf from Anco, I would like to start with you. Thank you, Michael. I have a question for you that goes around how cross-disciplinary collaboration can strengthen projects mm. or solutions, in your opinion. Mm. Well, I, I think it's, uh, thank you for the question, Mike, and I, I think it's, it's really important for us, at least, when we work with our clients, is that, it, first of all, obviously, we need to define what is the strategic challenge and how can creativity be a contributor to solving that challenge. So our goal is not to take over the challenge and solve it all. Our, our uh, um, idea is that we sh can be able to play a role in the field of creative storytelling in order to, 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 to make the impact higher and, and make the solution more successful. <clears throat> One example in that respect is that um, a number from McKinsey says that 70% of all transformation projects fail. And normally it's because of the lack of mobilization. So everything in the functional field is right. People have the right capabilities, they have the KPIs, there's a strategy, so the future is mapped out. But people aren't mobilized around solving the challenge. And guess what? Guess what can, can mobilize people? It's storytelling. So to get that dimension into driving change is, in, in our opinion, one of the most underutilized and uh, and, uh, and, and ready to be used uh, management tool uh, today. And when we go into a future now where we're not gonna go back to normal after Corona, but build back better, which I think is a fantastic concept, we need to start thinking differently. And in order to st think differently, we can't only go back to the management tools from the past uh, thousand years. We have to invent some new ones, and then we need creativity to be part of that equation. I yeah. absolutely agree with you, <laughs> and thank you for sharing some lights on it. You also said that, that 
um, one of the things that you work very actively with is strategy, creativity, and collaboration yeah. as a joint union. <clears throat> and I really like that because some people only uh, take one of the three dimensions into their work from the start. Yeah, we, th we think that, that practicing collaboration and having some principles for how you go into processes in order to be collaborative is really important and it's part of the way we think about our company and our modus operandi. So we don't do strategy and creativity in our workshops and training regimes and then we do collaboration at our Christmas party. Collaboration is something we train just the way we train strategy skills and creativity skills. Thank you so mm. much, Arno. Um, Jens from Takt, I also have a question for you. Um, mm. When you did your presentation, uh, as I said, I was very uh, impressed by the dem uh, democratic design for sustainable living. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that when you work with that, when you work in the design field with furniture design mm -hmm. and interior design, um, and you want to do, uh, uh, have impact sustainability-wise, I guess, this, I guess collaboration and partnerships is the key to that, uh, to be able to ensure that you have that impact that you want to. So I, I was wondering if you could kind of share some insights on how you work mm -hmm. in collaboration with others to ensure that your products actually have the impact that you want them to have. Super question, thanks for that. Um, at the very end of it, uh, sustainability is only interesting to talk about if a lot if a lot of people is actually using that solution mm. because then it has a real impact in society so of course we we aim for our business model our products are being used by the many because then we actually see a change in consumption and in behavior uh, getting getting there uh, we have a lot of collaborations we have, have a lot of partners uh, the first and foremost partner of course uh, is the designer mm. And um, the designer works with Takt because Takt is giving the designer a different brief. We are briefing the designer with uh, 10 eco-design principles. So 10 stumbling stones that designer needs to think about when designing the object. So not only the occasion that it serves into, the aesthetics of the product, the materials of the product, but also how you assembly the product, how you disassembly the product. And at the very full circle, how you're actually disposing the product the best way possible, or resell it. Um, we have, so those 10 eco-design principles, uh, we're working with the designer, we're working with a, with a, with a factory, uh, of course, uh, and really trying to be uh, ad adhere to those uh, eco-design principles to make sure that the consumers, when they buy a product from Top, can be absolutely sure that the product is sustainable and responsible all the way through. Mm. How did you determine what those uh, design principles should be? Well, uh, it's, it's done uh, by best practice, by, by logical thinking in collaboration uh, with the designers. So saying what are the products uh, needed in uh, the world of today and what are then the steps and the design principles we need to apply to achieve those products. So a very... Um, you might say scientific approach to something in the end very organic. Hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. And I think it's a great way to go about design and not only uh, do it from a consumer perspective, but actually have the whole uh, sustainability angle in it. Um, I guess more and more, uh, Arnold just shared Build Back Better, are thinking in those ways. Uh, and, um, and I think we can only... Uh, Pray that this is uh, that you're leading a trend uh, with your way of thinking furniture. We we hope so, and uh, one of our key values is uh, transparency. Mm -hmm. Not only in why products are costing the the the, the, the cost, but also uh, how we develop uh, our products. So the ten eco design principles are public on our website, so everybody can access tactcph.com and uh, and read more and in more depth about our design principles. Beautiful. And again, congratulations on your beautiful chair. I think I have to look into that. <laughs> it was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, also, Philip, uh, yes. I have a question for you. Please. Uh, Counterpoint. Um, in your opinion, what is the biggest lesson, takeaway, that you have received in Counterpoint through collaboration? Uh, and, and what value did it create? 
Well, I think it, it's, it's back to uh, the idea of trust. Uh, and I think in particular, you start realizing that when uh, we move beyond our own borders, um, particularly when we set up our uh, office in Tokyo, where it's such a high-text uh, environment uh, and c uh, culture, where trust and relationships are vital to create a, a sustainable business um, coming from outside. And uh, so trust was the only way that we could build relationships uh, with, with clients in the right way and, um, and not think of, of it as a strategic thing, but it really has to sort of, you know, you, you need to embody it in, I mean, you really need to live uh, trust and empowerment uh, for it to really succeed because you can strategize around it, you can find collaboration methods and so on. But really believing in it and really acting uh, truthfully, and uh, I think has, is, is really something that we are trying to exercise. Mm. Because you can instantly feel, no matter how well you've prepared into a meeting of any sort, whether the trust is being created, you feel that within the first five minutes, right? And, uh, and that is not gained by a lot of preparation, that's gained by, you know, just being uh, real people. Mm. Um, so I think that's, that's the most important thing to us. Mm. And I guess trust is also about transparency, uh, because Absolutely. setting the right team, being able mm. to trust that when you pay a certain amount of money for a solution, that you will get there effectively and that the team that you have hired are set up to do just that. Um, Absolutely. And I think seeing the most progressive companies around, such as Tact, really embracing the idea of, of uh, transparency, that is also something that we have to, as an agency, it's something that we tell all of our clients, so what, do, what does that mean to us as an agency? And that is really being transparent by our pricings, our, you know, of, of uh, both uh, worries and... Uh, and successes and so on. And I think that's uh, a really interesting exercise also at, at a service level, a personal service and agency level to, to exercise. Mm. Mm. I agree. And I think I've also heard a lot of uh, international collaboration partners talking about that we in Denmark are very, very, very good at setting the right team also outside of our own business to mm. be able to secure the best solution. Um, so I think that's also something that kind of is characteristic about the way that that you described that you work mm. so um thank you very much for that we only have 10, ten minutes or 10 seconds left so thank <laughs> you so much all of you for joining in um, we have had a lot of good discussions today and uh, reach out if you have any questions we have our beautiful companies with us and uh, creative denmark is also ready to answer any questions that you will have thank you for today thank you thank, thank you, you.